Canon. When I finally bought my Canon 70D, I was so happy to have that. It was so brilliant, it was so nice to have this face tracking out of focus so fast, so accurate, so beautiful. You can move anywhere and it's gonna track your face, so it was such a relief. And it was such a relief for a vlogger like me to shoot yourself with a flip-out screen and face tracking out of focus. It's beautiful, nothing better than that. That what I was thinking right before this camera came out. The one that I'm shooting with right now. And finally we're getting to the comparison of my favorite to my favorite cameras which are my old Canon 70D and my new Canon EOS 200D or SL2 internationally. Canon 70D is quite an old camera right now but it is still twice the price of the Canon 200D and so what's the reason to turn to a twice cheaper camera and I have real reasons for that and now let's go through them all one by one. Alright, so let's go through some advantages of disadvantages to me of Canon 70D and Canon EOS 200D which I wrote on this sheet of paper which is left from one of my actually CDs that I'm decorating my ceiling with. I'm actually not mentioning them in the order of importance. I'm just going through them just one by one. Let's go! Well, one thing is 1080p 60 frames per second, which is really good thing for slow motion. Previously I had to shoot 1080p with 24 or 30 frames per second with my main cameras, which is 70D previously, or my phone, or even my point and shoot Nikon camera, and I had to shoot uh, 60 frames with my smartphone, which had it just to get that motion with a slow motion, which is really beautiful. And finally, there is a portable Canon camera which shoots 1080p 60 frames per second. It's winter now, it's December, so I shot a few shots not far away from my studio so that you could see how beautiful this slow motion actually is. and 20p 60 frames per second just like 600d so sometimes i had to shoot 1080p and then stretch the 720p 60 frames per second to 1080p size which is a loss of quality as you understand so that's a bullshit and finally i now have a 1080p 60 frames per second with my new stick 200d which i really love the next point is wi-fi and bluetooth and nfc and all this stuff the interface is up. 70D has a Wi-Fi. Yeah, that's what I thought. And that's what I was watching in all these reviews. But what I did not know, that there are actually two Canon 70D versions. And I bought my Canon 70D used, and the seller did not tell me that his version was 70DN. So, there are actually two 70Ds. 70DW, which means Wi-Fi, and 70DN, which means NOT! And I actually did not know that. I checked everything that you could possibly check in the camera when I was buying from this seller, but I did not check for Wi-Fi. And I was quite disappointed with it, but what can I say? So, Canon EOS 200D has a Wi-Fi, which is really beautiful to control your shooting with your smartphone or to just transfer your files from your camera straight to smartphone so you can upload them straight to YouTube or Instagram or whatever. Or whatever. So having a Wi-Fi in camera is really beautiful. The next thing is the time-lapse video, which 70D does not have. It's a nice feature. Previously we had to do time-lapses with a lot of photos then compositing them to the one single video, which is a bullshit and waste of time. And now EOS 200D has a time-lapse video, which is, which is very nice. I actually did not use it for good, but I just tested it and you can see it on your screen. Just me having some tea and eating some cookies. So time-lapse video is a very nice feature of Canon 200D. 
one more very important feature for bloggers and YouTubers just like you or me. It's the 1080p 30 frames per second mode with 12 megabits bitrate. As you know, there's a resolution 1080p, there's a frames per second which is 30, and there's a bitrate which actually means the quality, the overall quality of the video, the sharpness and so on. And actually YouTube compresses all 1080p videos to 8 megabits. So what's the reason to shoot the 30, 40 or 50 megabits of video data with my Canon 600D or especially with the Canon 70D? Of course it's a beautiful quality, but what's the reason if YouTube compresses it down anyway? Some people would say that uh, higher bitrate video downgraded to the lower compressed by YouTube is still gonna look better. Well, probably it is so, but I actually don't see any much difference. For example, this video is shot at 1080p 30 frames per second with 12 megabits of bitrate and I think it looks really beautiful. And the main reason for this mode is just saving up your storage space. Just for example, as you can watch my previous video about my musical projects, this video was shot with two cameras. The main camera was this, uh, the Canon 200D and the second camera, camera from uh, the side, from the angle, was my Canon 70D. And both cameras were run at, at the same time, so it, they have absolutely the same timing. And just imagine all material that was shot with Canon 70D at that day for the, that video was 20 gigabytes. It's a pretty nice amount of storage space, right? And absolutely the same video length material with Canon 200D with this 12 megabits bitrate just took 7. 7 gigabytes comparing to 20 gigabytes. What are you? A bum? To look up for the storage space? Of course I'm not a bum. I have a lot of storage space. But if you're shooting on a daily basis or at least at a weekly basis like I do, at some point there's everything filled up and this 12 megabits mode anyway compressed to 8 megabits on YouTube is pretty much enough for a standard YouTuber, which is, I think, a very brilliant feature of Canon EOS 200D. The next one, or actually next two, are the size and weight. I have the cameras of all sizes. The Canon 200D is the smallest, the Canon 600D is bigger and the Canon 70D is the biggest of all my cameras. And it's actually not a big deal when you're shooting with a tripod, but when you're vlogging on the go or a handheld, actually having to hold this camera for so long on your straight arm is really heavy, even for a pumped up guy like me, it's really heavy. And this Canon 200D camera is so light you cannot believe, especially with the pancake lens, which I'm shooting actually with right now. This is a 24 mm pancake f2.8, which I love so much. Just look how much lighter and how much smaller this camera with the pancake lens is comparing to the 70D with the Sigma fast standard zoom lens. It is much, much lighter and much, much smaller, which is really nice. You can take it to your backpack. You can almost throw it in your pocket. So when you're going anywhere far, or you're limited with your space, the size and weight matters. And the last but not least on my list is the new feature in Canon EOS cameras, is the, which is the wide priority auto wide balance. This is a really, really nice feature. There is a separate video on Canon official YouTube channel explaining this feature, but to be brief, I'll say that. The all previous versions of auto wide balances on all Canon cameras just left some amber or yellowish tint in tungsten light with the auto wide balance. And I actually did not like that very much. Canon explains that it was deliberately said so, but I actually suppose that that was their fault. So, the new feature with the auto wide balance you have two choices the old white balance with that amber tint in the tungsten light and the new white balance which is supposed to be a real true white balance so that's why it's called white priority white balance but the very interesting thing that i noticed that the auto white balance in tungsten light actually differs from the tungsten light setting in the white balance choices 
So there is a little difference and actually I'm shooting right now with the actual tungsten light setting for white balance and I like it really more than the uh, white priority auto white balance but white priority auto white balance is really really good and it helps you in many ways at absolutely different lighting situations so this is a very cool feature which 70D lacks and 200D has and now let's go just through some disadvantages of 200D or advantages of 70D which are important for me once again, I'm not going through these points in the order of importance, just one by one. So, the first one is no photos in video mode. So, 200D cannot take photos in video mode, which is actually not very bad, I think. So, if you're shooting video, you're shooting video. And if you have to take photos, you just gotta switch to the photo mode. But, if there's something going on, if you're shooting video and you want to immediately take a picture, the 70D has such an opportunity you just press the shutter button and it takes picture and 200d not you really have to switch to this photo mode which is actually not convenient in some situations even my canon 600d can shoot a photo in video mode but 200d cannot do that it is especially strange when 200d has the custom functions and it has four modes for shutter button but it has no shoot photo in video mode that's a pity another very cool feature of 70d which 200d lacks is the continuous auto focus in photo mode why would you actually need that me personally i really need it for the thumb pics for my videos so when i want to take a picture of myself with no assistant here and I'm putting the photo in photo mode, I'm putting the camera to a timer of 10 seconds. The 70D has a continuous autofocus. So I can press the shutter button and go far away from the camera just as far as I want. And it still continues to track my face right until the point when the shutter goes down. And 200D does not do that. You just make an autofocus and when you press the shutter button the timer starts but the autofocus stays at the same point and if you're going away from the camera you're gonna be, you're not gonna be in focus so that's a bad thing and I always have to take my thumbnails for my videos with my Canon 70D despite the fact that I'm currently shooting all my videos with 200D the next thing that everybody complains about 200D is the battery compartment. The battery and the SD compartment are the same in this camera, so you don't have a real fast access to the SD card or battery all the time. But actually, when you're in a regular shooting situation, just like me here on a tripod, you're actually setting everything up for good for the whole video and you don't have to pull out the battery or the SD card but if you do it can really be inconvenient just to screw out your tripod head from your camera every time just to pull the SD card and battery out so that's a disadvantage of 200D but not a big one one real cool feature of 70D is the audio control over your LCD touchscreen both cameras 200D and 70D have LCD touchscreen which is really beautiful it is so easy and so convenient just to go through your all your manual settings by touching your beautiful screen but 70D has the audio control over the LCD screen and 200D has not and it also has not only the control but it also has the audio monitoring dur during the video recording so you can just check out your levels if they're peaking or not but actually as for me i actually setting set up all my audio levels just for the whole video and i check it beforehand so that's not a big deal to me and i don't have to check them over the lcd but still that's a nice feature of 70p and the final point that i'm seeing at all reviews and i think this is a stupid point all these reviewers say that the flip out screen does not flip when mic is inserted in so when the mic is plugged in you cannot turn the lcd well i'll show you right now how to do that folks if you want to flip your screen when the mic is inserted in you just have to pull a few millimeters your screen away from the mic and then it turns around whatever you like so that is absolutely not the point it's not difficult to do that just look like i'm doing this without any problems so that's a really fake and faulty and just a stupid point so this is not the disadvantage of 200d this is the disadvantage of someone's brain
Well, these are my thoughts on 70D and 200D, and I've made my choice. My main camera for video from now on is 200D, with its beautiful 1080p 60 frames per second for slow motion, with the built-in Wi-Fi with time-lapse video, and with the 12 megabits bitrate 30 frames per second full HD video for saving up a lot of storage space. And especially it's very light and it is small size with the pancake lens. And with the newest Canon feature, which is wide priority, auto wide balance, which is really good for tungsten light and for shooting in different lighting situations. But I'm still using 70D a lot. I use it for some B-rolls or for different camera angles. And I really use it in, for photos, because 70D is much better for photos than 200D. It has more autofocus points, actually, and it has continuous autofocus in photo mode, and it can take photos during video, which can, 200D cannot. And as well, 70D has the audio control and monitoring during video on your LCD screen. So 70D is a very, very beautiful camera, just for photos, and for videos I prefer 200D. And I even still shoot with my 600D. As you can understand, I had to shoot all these B-rolls of my 200D and 70D with my third camera, which is 600D. And it would be interesting that I shot it with my Chinese lens, which are quite soft for photos, but they are really nice for videos. Well, I actually forgot about one more camera that I'm using, that I own. I don't use it much, I used it a couple of times, but I own it, and it's the small action camera, it's, it's, this is Chinese, this is not a GoPro, but it's pretty nice, it shoots at 1080p at 30 frames per second, it makes a very bad 70 at 60 frames per second, it has no Wi-Fi, no 4K, but I have already ordered an update to that, the camera which shoots 4K and 120 frames per second, it has a Wi-Fi for different purposes, but as of now just Watch how this looks, this is really wide as you can see, but this is how it looks ungraded and this is how it looks just when I'm trying to grade like my Canon cameras, because these Canon footage I do not actually grade at all. I learned to operate ISO shutter speed and aperture of course, but for color content the most important thing is the white balance and the picture profile which Canon supplies. I installed a couple of my custom picture profiles and used white balance appropriately, so I think the video looks good just as it is from the, straight from the camera, so I do not color grade most of my vlogging videos these days. So to wrap up this video, if you have a 600D or 70D or 200D, please leave a comment below and tell me what are the advantages or disadvantages of your camera or maybe some features that I missed. That would be very interesting to discuss it. And if you like this video, just put thumb up, subscribe to my channel and tell me if there is anything more that you'd like to hear from me. Anyway, thanks for watching and see you next time. No, it's the Peter McKinnon thing. So I'm gonna do something original, like this.